Hello everyone, welcome back uh, to the subscribers that have been with me for so many years and also to those of you who are new, thank you for coming in. I um, want to talk today about the differences between a standard outlet and a commercial outlet, what, how they're different in their construction, um, how they're different and maybe how you wire them, and also uh, the price difference, and then finally which one I would recommend for you to use in your home. So let's get to the workbench where I can go through it with you. But before we go, I'm gonna ask you for a favor. In the first pinned comment of the video and also in the description, I'm gonna have my uh, affiliate Amazon link to take you into Amazon whenever you make any kind of purchases. I would appreciate it if you would bookmark that link and use that link anytime you go into Amazon to make purchases because the, the channel does earn a small commission and it helps me to purchase all of the materials and things that I that I need to purchase to make these videos for you. I appreciate you in advance for doing that. Let's get to the workbench. All right, we are here at the workbench and on the left-hand side we have the, the traditional regular residential 15 amp outlet and on the right-hand side we've got the commercial. So the first thing that is uh, different is how they're constructed, the materials uh, on, the, on the exterior. So these are made of PVC or thermoplastic, lighter in weight and inexpensive to, to make. And they could potentially crack uh, or get damaged under high heat. Now the commercial outlet is built from reinforced nylon or polycarbonate, which is much stronger and uh, heat resistant. So that's, that's the outer casing difference. Now the internal contacts are made of a thinner brass or copper alloy. They provide decent conductivity but are not going to last as long as a commercial which uses heavy gauge brass or brown or bronze and also inside where the plug goes in you have these contacts that pinch and I'm gonna put a try to put a picture if I find one up on the screen but you find these these contacts are pinched together they're more heavy duty and will not loosen over time like uh, like this outlet will you ever have those plugs that just won't stay in it's because they weaken because of the material that the uh, the contact is made out of they just spread apart too soon this one will hold its hold itself together a lot longer and also on the inside you'll have a uh, uh, on this one, you'll see that the contacts are, uh, there's nothing separating the two. And in here, you'll have at least a, a plastic barrier that will separate the neutral from the hot. So um, the other thing is, is the, con the contacts in the back. So if you flip these over, you've got, you've got spots to backstab here, which I've done videos on before as to reasons why I don't like it and there's a reason why you don't have that here on a commercial outlet right look at the difference in the uh, terminal screws so on the commercial outlet they're a little bit larger than on this one you're gonna have more surface area they're constructed better the the uh, the material here I don't you know again it could be you know copper let's call it you know brass or, or copper alloy is a lot thicker than it is on this one. You also have these uh, spots here where you can put your wire in and tighten it down so you don't have to make a J-hook, although I prefer doing J-hooks. So the connection points are, are better. Also, um, you're gonna, you're just gonna find that it's gonna be easier to wire the outlet. You have more room here. Than you do on this side to be just to wire up the the outlet now let's talk about grounding so you see here you're going to have on the regular residential outlet just a normal uh, ground screw and then this goes inside the outlet now this one here the commercial you've look at how much difference there is you've got the ground screw and it's attached to the entire outlet you've got it wrapping to the back all of the metal that's on the exterior of this outlet is attached to ground now. And this one is not, that's not the case. Okay, so 
just look at that difference here again let's keep it on the right hand side for you commercial versus residential all right now the faceplate and the yoke this is much sturdier than this one if that matters to you i know sometimes these things get bent when you tighten them especially when your um, outlet is not mounted properly and you, it's a recess and you tighten it down too much these things will start to bend not on the on the commercial it's just thicker the other thing too about this is usually just like a galvanized steel and this is going to be either zinc plated steel or brass this one happens to be zinc plated steel so uh, let's talk about code and safety so the commercial will have stricter UL or NEC standards than the than this one. This one is just going to be produced at the minimum. Minimum in quality, minimum needed to pass for local code. So this is trying to get you the cheapest outlet possible without burning your house down is really what it comes down to. And this one is for ultimate quality and safety. Now let's talk about the costs. So checking pricing today for this one at your local home improvement store, 87 cents. All right, this one, $2.61, which is a difference of, you know, right around $1.74, $1.75, right? Difference. My review of these and what my thoughts are, my recommendation is go with the commercial outlets. Do not go cheap on these. Go with the commercial outlet. We're talking about we're talking about wiring in your home. We're talking about safety for your home and your family. I've had too many situations where it gets too hot and this thing starts to melt and catch fire. Less likely to happen with one of these. Um, my recommendation is to go here with this. Did I do a good job of convincing you to go to the com with the commercial outlet? Now, let me just put it into perspective with you when it comes to the cost. Let's say you've got an average of five outlets in each room. You're talking about a difference of about $8 and change per room. Let's say you have a really big house and you've got a 10 room house. It's around 80 to $90 to make sure that the house is wired completely with the best possible equipment. When you look at it like that, it's not that much money and definitely worth the peace of mind in doing so. Once again, I would appreciate if you would use that Amazon link I mentioned. Also, if you felt that this video was helpful, please give me a quick like. And if you wanna see more like this, just subscribe and you'll get notified. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope you do have a great day.